Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. Let's come before the Lord and um, do the next uh, message. Let's come before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love and we thank you for your grace and care. And Father, we pray as we look at your word now that you bless us and encourage us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for your glory. Amen. Amen. So if you turn to John 14, 5 and 7, it says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do not know him and have seen, you do know him and have seen him. So I just pray again. Father, we thank you for this day and your goodness and love. I just pray you'd empower me now and bless us, Lord, uh, as we come to round your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Excuse me. Okay. Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life. This is what an Indian, Indonesian pastor, about an Indian past, Indonesian pastor who was shot dead while speaking from the pulpit during an evening service. Four masked men who were ride by motorbikes opened fire with machine guns on the Reverend Sassini Tinilel and the worship team. Reverend Sassini, who was shot in the head, in the head died instantly. Four teenage worshippers were hospitalized with serious injuries and one 17 year old girl is in a coma. The world doesn't like us standing for Jesus Christ as being the way, the truth and the life. There's a cost in following Jesus. There's a cost in proclaiming him as the only way. And we can't get round that as a church. The church wants to placate the world, wants to make the world think that the church is not arrogant, that it, it is inclusive. But ultimately the gospel offends, ultimately the message of Jesus offends. In Daniel chapter 3.16 it says, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied to the king, or Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter if we are thrown into the blazing furnace. The God we serve is able to save us from it and we and will rescue us from your hand, O King. Shadrach Meshach were thrown into the fire by Nebuchadnezzar because he didn't like their message, he didn't like their religion. We have to face the fact that modern culture will not find the Christian message palatable. It will always find the message offensive and we have to face that fact so first of all the challenge of the church Thomas here says and Thomas said to him Lord we do not know where we are going how can we know the way Thomas isn't clear about Jesus he isn't clear about the truth and so Jesus has to say I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to Father but through me. And the challenge is the shirt for the church is to be clear about her message. If the trumpet blows an uncertain sound, who will hear? And the church has to declare a clear, bold message of what she believes and be uncompromising in that boldness. And that's what you have to do today as a church. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 11 it says command and teach these things we're to teach the people the Word of God we're to teach the people clearly what to believe in 1 uh, Hebrews chapter 5 12 for though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and you have some need you have come to need milk and not solid food and the challenge of the church when we're confronted with our challenges today is that 
we need to be growing from milk to food. We need to be growing from baby food to solid food. We need to be studying the Bible, getting to grips with it, and then being able to teach it to our generation. Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts. The Jehovah's Witnesses are successful because they prey on a church that doesn't know the word of God. We have to be people of the word. We have to be teaching the word of God, building people up in the word. The challenge of the church is if we're going to know if Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, we're only going to learn that from the Bible, and we have to be willing to teach the Bible to our generation. Secondly, the challenge of pluralism. It says in, in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. And our modern culture tells us that all religions are the same that every religion is a value no one religion is superior to another but our faith offends because Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life no one can come to the Father but through me we have to be willing to speak out and say no Christ is the only way um, in Acts chapter 17 22 Paul says men of Athens I see that in every way you are very religious and then he says when they heard about the resurrection of the dead some of them sneered but others said we want to hear you again on the subject in verse 32 so in Acts 17 he talks about all religions but then he brings it home and says Jesus rose from the dead what are you going to do about it some got offended some believed and it's the same with you today <coughs> You've got to be able to teach and be willing to preach and speak and say Jesus is the only way. Some will be believed and some will get offended. Acts chapter 4 verse 12, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven and earth given by men which must be saved. So we're, we're not an appreciation of society where people come and just pat us on the back and say, aren't we lovely? We you agree with us in our in our society you agree with everything we say we're a proclamation society we proclaim the truth the gospel so pluralism is a challenge to the church that we preach Christ secondly there is a challenge of postmodernism postmodernism is a reaction against modernism ie all knowledge is based on science and so postmodernism re reacts against that. Postmodernism um, rejects objective truth. It it's skeptical of authority. It's looking for self-identity. It blames modernity for the problems. They are they live in a media world. They engage in a knowing smile. They are on a quest for unity they live in a materialist world they ask carefully to clarify what you say they speak in positive language they admit their weaknesses they don't go looking for a fight they talk about grey areas Postmodernism is around. Many people like postmodernism. But again, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. And we have to be willing to proclaim the exclusivity of Christ in the midst of postmodernism. And in the end, postmodernism is, is intolerant because it says that it agrees with everything but it doesn't agree with anything that challenges it all right so we mustn't be offended by postmodernism you can actually learn some good things from postmodernism but at the same time 
if it strips away that Christ is exclusive, Christ really died and rose again, if it attacks those foundations, then postmodernism is dangerous. But postmodernism is a challenge, and we have to proclaim Jesus is the only truth. The next challenge is universalism. If we sorry guys. In Galatians chapter one it says they only heard this report that man who formerly persecuted is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. Matthew 15 19 it's analysis of human nature for out of the heart proceed of evil thoughts murders adulteries fornication theft false witness blasphemy these are the things which defile a man Matthew 15 19 10 so those two scriptures in Galatians it's talking about Paul was a blasphemer yet he began to be converted and preach the gospel the Lord talks about the deceitfulness of man And universalism comes along and says, look, all this saying people are sinners and Jesus is to be preached. No, we don't we don't do that because in the end everybody's going to get saved. But uh, in Paul warns against this in two Timothy chapter three, one and five. But Mark, there will be terrible times in the last days, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful and unholy. Scriptures clearly teach that there is a wrath to come, that there is a judgment, that Christ is the only way to get saved. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And these challenges we face today, we find that we, we are challenged by the lack of education within the church about the gospel. We're challenged by pluralism. We're challenged by postmodernism, and we're challenged by universalism. But let us turn to Jude, in conclusion. Let us turn to Jude. It says this Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God and Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied beloved when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was come once delivered unto the saints we must earnestly contend for the faith that is to say that there's only one gospel that gospel is Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through the death and resurrection and belief in Jesus Christ. And we have to contend against pluralism. We have to contend against postmodernism. We have to contend against anything that would set itself up against that gospel. We have to proclaim the gospel clearly and boldly and teach it to every generation and pass the baton on. And I ask a question and that is this do you know what the gospel is and are you passing it on are you training your people your young people to pass on the gospel otherwise if you do not they will fall under universalism they will fall under postmodernism they will fall under pluralism 
and the gospel will be destroyed. So, Romans 5, it says, Therefore, seeing we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Through who? Buddha? No. Through Muhammad? No. Through Dawkins? No. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way to get saved. Thank you for listening and God bless you.